In today's tutorial, let's explore this rib stitch scarf together. This is very, very simple. And let me show you the tricks and secrets on being able to make one for yourself. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as ZeroInspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to make a rib stitch scarf. This is part of the February 2016 Mood Scarf series where the colors are depending on your mood. And you can see all the different kinds of uh, moods that you can change and it's completely up to you. Today's tutorial I'm going to cover the basics on how to be able to do the stitch work for this particular mood scarf. The color changing is up to you. I'm going to show you some tricks to be able to change your colors even if you're not having a, a mood swing. I'm going to show you where you need to change your colors in order to make this pattern work for you. So without further ado, let's grab some yarn and let's talk a little bit more about this project. So this scarf is depending on sets of two. So even if you wanted to make this into a full size afghan, as long as you keep them in sets of two, you're always going to be able to work out in order to keep the ribbing really quite balanced. It's really quite easy to follow. What we're going to be concentrating on today is that we're going to do double crochet front post as well as a double crochet back post within this uh, tutorial today. And once you get the swing of it, it's really quite easy and you can pick it up, put it down as often as you wish and you're going to be able to pick it up right where you started or right where you left off really. So let's uh, begin, let's grab a crochet hook. So they're asking for a five and a millimeter size H crochet hook today, which is in my hand. And they're using Karen Simply Soft throughout today's tutorial. You can use this for any type of stitch, whether you want to even do the Bernat uh, blanket yarns, just make sure that your hook complements your yarn. So let's begin. I'm just going to start off with the slip knot and there are slower tutorials on how to do the basics of crochet here on our YouTube channel. And let's insert our hook into the slip knot. Remember that the slip knot never counts as one. So within today's project, if you're doing the scarf as is, you need to chain 34. But if you want to change the sizes, just keep it in sets of two. And I'm going to do that for today's demonstration. I don't need to do the whole scarf in order to show you how to do the stitch. So as long as I keep it in sets of two, I'm always going to be right. So I'm just going to go one and two and one and two and one and two and you're going to stop when you're satisfied with the width of it if you want to improvise. So one and two and one and two and one and two just like that. So that's how you would do the first line. So if you're doing the scarf as is it's chain 34. If you want to improvise let's just keep it in sets of two. So let's begin the first row and you'll notice that it says WS. This is the wrong side and this is going to matter in the next part of the next instruction. So what we're going to do is that we're going to no matter what size that you have even if you made it into an afghan size you're going to count to the fourth chain. Just turn it over and count back. So one, two, three and four and just turn it over and get that back loop only of your chain and just double crochet into that chain. And what I want you to do now that you've done the back loop of that one, the chain will stay turned upside down and you'll see the back loops all exposed and you are just going to simply just double crochet into each one of those all the way until the other side of your project, whether it's a scarf or even an afghan. So you're just going to just double crochet yourself all the way across. So we're not sweating at this point and being able to figure out the stitch work and it's going to be quite awesome. So let's just go all the way to the end. And I'm almost there already because it's such a small example. My goal today is just to show you how to do the stitch, how to change color if you need to. Because if you're doing the moods then you're obviously going to change color. So you're going to go right to the very end. Okay so you got one left and just double crochet. Okay and what I want you to do now is that we're going to turn our work and start row number two. So let's begin row number two. We're going to turn our work but before we begin anything at this point what I want you to do is just pull up on a loop, get it bigger and just let it hold. Now it says in the instructions in the notes that you want to apply a safety pin to the right side of the scarf. Now remember what I just said. This side was the wrong side. So this side when I turned it around is the right side. It's the side that's very visual. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to grab either a safety pin or a spare piece of yarn and just put it on to an area just just slightly in so that this will always stay on the one side. So whenever we change color it's always suggesting you do it when you're facing the right side. And I'm just lightly attaching this to here so I always will be able to recognize what is the right side and what's the wrong side. Once you get on this project you're never going to know. So let's put this back on the hook. So I know now that this neon color is always going to represent the right side of the project. So let's begin row number two. 
So to continue row number two, what we're just going to do is that we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and that counts as a double crochet um, as you have read in the instructions. So it's asking you to start off with a double crochet front post in the next and then a double front, uh, double crochet back post into the one after that. And we're gonna keep alternating that all the way to the end of the line. So to do that, we wrap the hook first and we go into the side of a post and back out the other side. This is the front post double crochet and wrap the hook, yarn, pull through two and two. So it's double crochet but through a front post. Now the other one is, the next one is a back post uh, double crochet. So, so it's the double crochet back post. Wrap the hook coming around from the back side, pop it out through the front and pop that same post out to the back. Okay, so you're accessing it from the back, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook, just finish it off like a regular double crochet. So that was the back post. So the next one is obviously a front post. So wrapping it, coming into the side of the post, back out the front, and the next one is a back post. So wrap the hook, coming from the back, out to the front, and back out to the back again, just like this. So the next one is a front post, so in through the side. Once you get the rhythm of this, this is really quite easy. You'll notice that the, uh, the ribs will all line up all the way out through the scarf, and once I show you the next uh, row, which is the repeat row for everything for the remainder of the scarf, it's quite easy. So the next one is a front post. Double crochet, next one is a back post. So once you get to the final one, all the way across, the last one in the turning chain is just a double crochet. So a double crochet right into the turning chain itself. So don't do any front or back posts on the side chain like this. Okay, so let's turn our work and move up to row number three. So let's turn our work and we're moving up to row number three. So you can see when you turned it around, the stitches that are in front here are the front posts and the stitches that are in the back posts are back posts. So in order to make this whole thing work and you'll look at, it, at this in the picture is that these ribs all stay consistent. So we're gonna start off in the one right here. This is a front post and the next one is a back post. So we wanna match exactly and keep it exactly what you see. So wrap in the hook, We sorry, we want to chain three. One, two, three to start. So the very first one right here is a front post double crochet. We wanna keep it as a front post, so wrap the hook and do it as a front post double crochet. Okay, the next one is a back post. You can see that it's tucked in behind, so coming around from the back, pop it back out to the back, and do that as a back post. And that'll keep your ribbing consistent. So the next one is a front post. So you just have, you don't have to count anything. You just gotta look at what's there and just exactly match what you see. So it's either gonna be a front post or it's gonna be a back post double crochet. Just like this. And you're gonna go all the way to the end. So I promised you that we had uh, the front side and the wrong side for your instructions. And I'm gonna show you to do how to do that next. And you can see that the right side okay, is actually facing away from me because I put that marker in there. But you know, if that marker wasn't there, honestly, unless I'm looking at the string, I would never be able to tell. So we have to really be kind of careful with that. So when you get all the way to the other side, you're just gonna put in a double crochet right in the top of the turning chain. So let's say pretend we're changing color, not pretend, I'll show you how to change color, and uh, we'll do that next. So let's say I'm satisfied and I wanna change the color. So you can see that the wrong, the right side is on the other side of here. So when I turn it around, the right side is facing us. So I wanna fasten this off before I move on. So all I'm just gonna do is just grab some scissors and cut my yarn. And I just want to pull this string through and I want to weave it nicely within the stitch work that you see. You could also use a darning needle if you wish. A darning needle is better. So if I just I grab up a darning needle here off camera, I would do a darning needle if it were me. But if you don't have a lot of time and you prefer not to put in the extra work, that's up to you. So if you put it in the darning needle, a work can never fall out if it goes in three different directions. So just gliding it along some of the fibers. Just going in. Okay, just kind of giving it a bit of slack, go back in the same direction, but through a different area of the fibers. Because if you go in the exact same path, it'll fall out. And then you go one more time, so a third time in. 
this is the best way to change colors and therefore you can cut this yarn right at where it's popping out like so not the sharpest scissors <laughs> and let's turn our work and let's get ready so I can see that this is the front side and so let's I uh, get our next color so I'm just going to go for the neon because why not keep it bright and I'm going to start off with a slip knot and I'm going to put that on my hook and I'm going to join it to the very first one here okay and I can tell this is the right side because we've already marked that and I want to just put the yarn over and pull through to attach okay and what I want to do is just this straggler here okay right right here what I want to do is just yarn over and pull it through the one so we're going to chain three so this will be one of the three and then I'm going to let that straggler fall out this will be two and three just like that so we just have to match exactly what you see so you can see that this is the front post this is the back post so don't worry about the straggler just let it fall out of the way so we just got to match so the first one will be a front post double crochet the next one will be a back post double crochet so no big deal right so this is all this particular pattern is it's just a matter of uh, rib work going the ribs all just kind of follow all the way down just like this so just going back and forth whether it's back post or front post doesn't matter just exactly match what you have there are other types of stitches where you can make it opposite to each other uh, basket weave is a great example of that too so once you get all the way to the other side okay don't forget a double crochet in the top of the turning chain okay not into a gap space but an actual chain turn your work and begin the next row so we chain three one two three okay the first one is a front post you can see that so you just match so the mood scarf you change the colors as often as your mood swings um, and you can do as many rows as you prefer that your mood is <laughs> mine could be black some days I'm sure in raving lunatic mad red up to you you know it's your mood swing you can decide what colors that work for you but this is a great little scarf um, it goes relatively quickly as you can see and because you're working on the ribs it has some elasticity to it and it works out to be quite nice this was the straggler here that we can safely trim out because of the way that I had you put it in it, you can just safely trim that right down and not worry about it so make sure you put it in double crochet right into the top and the scarf is actually quite fabulous it's easy to make and you just go as long as you need to go and so it says the scarf is going to be about 70 inches long and that doesn't include the fringe and the fringe I think is about um, was actually quite generous on length as well it's about eight inches extra on both sides and so this is just how you do the scarf it's a rib stitch scarf it's really quite amazing have some fun with the color and you can have some really fun with the ideas as well you can even do some doctor who or anything like that with this particular stitch it's just a lot of fun till next time mikey on behalf of the yarn inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com have a super day and we'll see you again real soon Bye bye